Here I have my Arduino Uno board. And this one has a prototyping board on top with a small breadboard. Now I've got this hooked up at the moment with two buttons that are connected on one side to ground and on the other side connected to an LED via a small resistor, this one 330 ohms, and then to the five volts on the Arduino. So this is just basically using the Arduino as a power, power source. So what I've got hooked up here is what's known as an AND gate. Basically, this button has to be on, and this button has to be on for the LED to light up. So let's have a look at this. We push both buttons, and the LED goes on. If we only push one, then nothing happens. Now, this circuit is okay if our actuator, in this case our LED, is connected to the same circuit as our buttons. But if we want to use some buttons in our circuit where they're physically not connected to our actuator, just say, for example, uh, we want to control an actuator uh, over Bluetooth, then this circuit is not going to work for us. So we would need a better solution for this case. So I'll show you what a better solution is. Okay, so here we have our Arduino Uno again. And this time I've got it set up a little bit differently and what I'm going to do firstly is show you the wrong way to connect these buttons so if we look at what's going on here all of our components are not physically connected to each other so this button here is not physically connected to this button and these buttons are not physically connected to the LED here we can see um, one of these buttons here is connected to pin 2 one is connected to pin 3, our LED on the positive side is connected to pin 9, and then we have each of these components connected to ground. Now you might think that if you wanted to pull these pins to low to turn on this LED, you would just need to connect on one side to one of the pins set up as an input, and then the other side connected to ground. But um, that's not the way you do this because when I connect this up, you'll see what happens. So let's connect it up. And we can see here that our LED goes on and off at random. So sometimes it'll go on and off. Just basically pushing the buttons does nothing here. So we've got it on at the moment, but if we just move it around a bit, we'll find that it just goes off by its own accord. So what's happening here is that the button input is neither high nor low. It, it floats between the two. So it's what's known as a floating voltage. So what we have to do is set up our circuit to make sure that the button is either high or low, but not in between. So let's have another go at this so we can get it right next time. And here we have the correct circuit. So we can see with our buttons, we have the button connected on one side to ground. And on the other side, the button is connected to the pin. So either pin two or pin three. And then via a 10K ohm resistor to the five volts. So in this case, the pin is either pulled high or low, depending on whether the button's pushed. So when the button is pushed, the pin is pulled low. And then when the button isn't pushed, it is pulled high. So now, if we push both buttons together, we have our LED performing exactly as it should. Here we have an illustration of the first circuit we used. So this one where the buttons were physically connected to each other. So you can see here, we've got the five volts going through our resistor, through our LED, then through both of our buttons. So in this case, both of the buttons have to be pushed to turn the LED on. And we're only using the Arduino Uno 
as a power source so no code would be needed for this setup if we go down to these two here so this is the the wrong way to connect both of these buttons so for one case where you'd want to pull the pin to low when the buttons pushed or to high but both of these will not work because what they'll cause what is known as a floating voltage on the input pins and here we have the correct circuit layout where we have the buttons connected on one side to the 5 volts via a 10k ohm resistor and also on that same side we have it connected to the two input pins and on the other side of the button we have them connected to ground so what happens here is when the button is pushed then this connects the input pin to ground pulling it low when the button isn't pushed then the button is connected via this 10k ohm resistor to 5 volts meaning that the input is high so we can see the schematic view here of this so we have the 5 volts on one side and ground on the other so what happens when the button here is not pressed we have the 5 volts going into the input pin via the resistor here and when the button is closed we have the 5 volts going directly to ground through this resistor and it's very important that you have that resistor in because you wouldn't want to connect your 5 volts directly to ground because that would be a short circuit and would be very bad for your Arduino so make sure you've got that resistor in there so once again looking down at the circuit itself we can see that when the button is pressed then we have a connection to ground via this resistor here when the button isn't pressed then the 5 volts is connected to the input pin via the resistor now let's have a look at the code so the code for this here is quite simple so we've got our three variables set up here and we've got them set up as constant integers so the values don't change here so we've got the LED pin, pin 9 and then the two button pins, pins 2 and pin 3 and of obviously we set our LED to an output and we set both of our buttons to inputs and then in the loop section we've created two new variables here so integer va uh, value A and value B and they are set to read button 1 and read button 2 so using the di digital read function and here we have our is if statement that does all the work so if value A is equal to low and value B is equal to low so this checks the status of both buttons if they're both equal to low then the code underneath is run so this is digital write the LED pin to high so basically switches on the LED and else if that condition is not met then the LED is written to low so very simple code and a very simple setup and that's how it's done thank you